Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And I think a lot of people will be very happy to see this particular unit. This is the X230. So this is a particular unit, again, on loan from a generous watcher. And this is mostly regarded to be like one of the last great uh, X uh, series of laptops. There was a lot of people that didn't like some of the design choices that uh, would later come with the X240, and I understand that. Uh, so I wanted to go through this, talk about what those changes were, and actually in another video, not this one though, we're actually going to be comparing the kind of the first, or not, I shouldn't say the first four, but four ThinkPad X series of all, all the generations. But we'll do that uh, probably in about a week, I think. At any rate, let's talk about what is the same and what is different between the X230 and the X220. The main difference, other than a few hardware updates, of course, is the keyboard. So this has now gone to the chiclet style keys. This particular unit is actually backlit. Uh, however, a lot of people didn't necessarily like this move, and there is a mod where you can take the X220 keyboard, uh, isolate a few pins, and then you can install it with essentially no other modification required. However, if you do not uh, modify the pins on the X220 and the pinout is not uh, what it needs to be, it can actually cause the keyboard to overheat and cause damage either to the computer or the keyboard itself. So I will leave a link in the description down below if you are interested on doing that modification. Uh, the steps that you'll need to take and any other uh, conditions and things that you should know. Getting back to this unit, in terms of how it looks, it is shockingly similar to the X220. So let's first off talk about the port differences. So the X230 will be on top, the X220 will be on the bottom. For ports, USB 3 finally. There is a modification here where this VGA now has uh, the holes drilled into the chassis rather than this being a separate component. On the X220 this was used to hold the motherboard in place. I'm going to be very interested to see what that looks like on the inside. We've gone from a full display port uh, plug to a mini display port, USB 3.0, and everything else on this side remains the same. The back is uh, the same. <laughs> barrel plug, same type. Over here, again, everything is essentially the same. So now that we've gone uh, through those differences and similarities, there are a few other things that I want to mention about this versus its uh, predecessor. The X230 does have a locked down BIOS. This is when they started to do certain things to stop the customer from adding non-authorized parts and things like that. There are still ways around it, it's just a little bit more involved than a simple software flash. Again, lots of documentation out there, but this is a loaner, so I'm not going to be doing any of that to this particular unit. You are running a slightly faster uh, version of Intel HD graphics, which is a nice little upgrade, which is why many people uh, will chase this guy down because of that. It's in terms of processor-wise, it is also running a slightly uh, up-to-date series of processors. This particular unit, I believe, is running the Core i5-3320M, which is the lowest configuration it came in. It came with a 3660M and an i7-3520M. So there was considerably less Ivy Bridge uh, processor choice going on there. Uh, there were a series of different panels available, but again, it either came in a TN or an IPS. Those are your two choices, and I'm not sure which one this is yet. It does have a mini PCI uh, slot, which is pretty handy, and I'm not 100% sure if you're going to get SATA 3 speeds out of that. I will have to double check. Everything else more or less is the same, however. If you think that I have forgotten a significant change, please let me know in the comments down below so we can inform all of the viewers. So let's go ahead and just disassemble this to see and ensure that everything on the inside is actually uh, the same as I think it is. So the very first thing that we need to do is remove the battery. There is a battery lock latch over on the left that needs to be disengaged, and then you can move the battery 
simply like this. And if we take a look on the bottom, this is an X230 battery, and I believe the cutout is actually going to make this battery proprietary just because. However, that might not be the case. I might have to see if you can actually swap the batteries between these because they look very, very similar indeed. I think you might be able to get away with that. At any rate, let's go ahead and grab our trusty screwdriver here now that we've gone ahead and removed the battery and see what we can see. So the very first thing that we're going to notice is that our RAM access uh, door is right here. So we're going to go ahead and spin out these two screws. Now, according to my sources, we do have two RAM slots, and that is confirmed here. And I believe that you can actually get up to, in these uh, RAM slots, if you so desired, up to 16 gigabytes of 10600 DDR3 memory at 1600 megahertz. This particular unit, if I check my specifications here, came to me with eight gigabytes of RAM. So very respectable, but we could uh, double that if we so chose. But this is certainly not what we would call a slouch of a machine. RAM clips are here and here. Everything is pretty straightforward. Over here we have our standard retention uh, screw for our hard disk bay. So let's go ahead and spin that out and move that off to the side. Take the cable, of course, and flip that out. And out that comes. And we've just got a standard SATA 3 solid state hard disk hanging out in there. Nothing too surprising. Let's uh, spin these out and see what this fellow looks like underneath. So we're going to go ahead and remove the two screws for our keyboard. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the screws for the palm rest as well. It's also worth pointing out that I actually think, and maybe this is just uh, comparing mine to this one because it's in a little bit better shape, at least the bottom case is, the bottom case feels significantly nicer than the X220's uh, bottom case that I have. I'm not entirely sure why that is. It could just be that mine is beaten up more and this one's in better shape, or maybe the manufacturing process changed uh, ever so slightly. But I'm a little curious because I also noticed on the X201 that the bottom case seemed to be a little nicer as well. So hard to say. All right, with those screws out of the way, we should be able to do our ThinkPad keyboard wiggle. There we go. And we'll just lift that, fold it toward us. There's our connector. This is looking pretty familiar. And we've gone ahead and removed that. So keep in mind that if you are going to do the keyboard swap, you got to be paying real close attention to those pins. Okay, so down here we should just be able to lift this up and out. And our retention ribbon, of course, is right there. So we'll flip that up with a fingernail. There we go. And on the bottom, of course, we have the fingerprint sensor, the trackpad, and all of that can be removed out the back if you need. And of course this is essentially the same, in fact it might even be part for part interchangeable with the X220. Moving that over, let's go ahead and take a look at the guts. and We'll get in here for a closer look. So this would appear to be the connector potentially for the panel. That's there. This of course is protecting the hard disk bay. Over here we have our Wi-Fi card and this of course is our MSATA bay. So things are essentially more or less where we would expect to find them. Our CMOS battery is hanging out over here and everything else is relatively accessible. Our two speakers, and you know how I feel about speakers and ThinkPads, are hanging out here and or seem to be where you'd expect them to be. And yeah, the only other thing that you would be doing at this point really is removal of the motherboard. 
And I did mention previous on the X220, you had to remove the two VGA uh, female, uh, female screws, but it does not look like that is the case in this particular unit. It is nice to see, however, that the trend continued where everything is nice and covered up and directs all the water uh, to non-critical components and those drainage holes. And I will say that, unsurprisingly, the person that refurbished this has done an excellent job, very clean on the inside, and it's essentially everything that you would expect from an X230. So let's go ahead and put this guy back together. Alright ladies and gentlemen, let's wrap up with the X230. So here's how I feel about this particular unit. If you are really wanting that slight step up, but significant step up from the X220, there is a lot of features here to like. Even if you're not a huge fan of the keyboard, things can be done, of course, to uh, swap those out. Just make sure that you're doing it correctly. You do have the nicer Intel HD graphics that you get with this particular unit, and a few small and you know tasteful upgrades here and there like USB 3.0. So there is a lot to like. Some of the things that I would detract from it, of course, though, is that we are now walking into the locked down BIOS territory, which does mean that some avenues are going to be closed off to you unless you are uh, willing to do a little bit of extra digging, a little bit of hardware modification, that sort of thing. However, if that does not uh, dissuade you whatsoever, this is an excellent model to chase down over the X220. However, if USB 3.0 and all of those other things pale in comparison to you wanting to be able to uh, you know, tweak that BIOS a little bit more, then there is something to be said about that as well. And in a future video, I will be comparing the X230 back against some of its predecessors and forward against its successor. If you enjoyed this sort of content or if you have any questions about this particular unit, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll do my absolute best to answer them. If there is any material that I missed about the X230, some of the mods that you can do or some of the ones that you've done, again, let me know in the comments below. I always love reading the stories about how people are modifying these machines. Lastly, of course, if you uh, genuinely enjoy this content and would like to see more, be notified when I release a new video, please make sure that you're hitting that subscribe button, and I believe there's like a notification bell there as well that you can hit, and you'll be notified when my next video goes live. And that is just a really great and simple way uh, for you to show your support, and it also kind of frees up some time and resources for me to continue uh, to film these, hopefully in a quicker fashion uh, now that we're getting back into the groove of things. Thank you very much, and I shall see you next time.